If you want to find and attract wealthy clients into your coaching business, you're going to want to pay very close attention to this video because I'm going to walk you through the three things you must have in order to make that happen. Let's go. Hey, what's going on? Uriel Kim here, CEO and founder of Healthpreneur. We help health practitioners and coaches get clients and scale their practices online. And if you are a health expert or a coach looking to get wealthier clients, then you're in the right place because I'm about to tell you the secret sauce. And let me spoil the surprise first by letting you know that everything you have seen online, all the tactics, all the funnels, all of that stuff is gonna make absolutely zero difference, zero impact to attracting wealthier clients unless you have the three things I'm about to share with you dialed in. Because here's the thing, guys, here's the thing you gotta recognize is that life is a boomerang. Life is a boomerang. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this in just a second, so just keep note of that. So I want you to understand this is that Tactical band-aids, tactical band-aids will never solve deeper issues. So think about this. You cut your finger, deep cut, right? So it's gone through the epidermis, the dermis, everything, like four layers deep. And you try to put a band-aid on that, it's not gonna solve the problem. It's not gonna heal the wound. You gotta get stitches. You gotta go deep. You gotta figure out, like, get to the roots. That's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about a little surface cut that you can seal the band-aid. If you're not attracting the clients you want, you know, whether it's wealthy clients or even just your perfect clients, um, it has nothing to do with tactics. Messaging, all that kind of stuff, the offer, sure, that comes into play, but that's like the next level once you have this foundation, okay? So this foundation I'm about to share with you, you gotta internalize this. Like, you have to live this. If you don't, nothing else you do in your business is gonna make a difference. I promise you this. I've been at this for a very long time. I've worked with thousands of entrepreneurs in the health space and outside of the health space. And I'll tell you, like, it's... It's the way it goes. Okay, so anyways, first thing, so I'm gonna share three things you gotta get dialed in. Number one is you need to clarify with like laser pinpoint accuracy who your perfect client is, okay? Now, what I'm not saying is I'm not saying I help people lose weight. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about I help Suzanne, who's a 37-year-old mom of three, who spends $1,000 a month at Lululemon and shops at Whole Foods and goes to yoga three times a week. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> you need to know your perfect client. <clears throat> I apologize, I'm, I'm losing my voice here. You need to know your perfect client at such a level that you can visually see them. And if you were to walk by them on the street, you'd be like, hold on, hold on, you're my perfect client. Like you could literally take a picture of them and that would be them. So. There's a couple things to do here. This is actually the first thing we do with our clients because it's the foundation of everything. The two most important decisions you'll make in business is your perfect client and your business model. Everything else will flow from there. If you get these two things wrong, you're toast. So your perfect client, there's a couple things. Um, for the sake of time and simplicity, the I think one of the most important things you wanna really think about is the psychographics and the demographics of your audience. There's another component to this that we call the emotion inventory, which is essentially looking at the fears, frustrations, desires, and wants of your client, which is very important as well, but more from a messaging standpoint. What I'm sharing with you here is really, you need to be able to visualize in your mind who your perfect client is. Because unless you are like crystal clear on this, you can't attract them. Clarity by speed. Clarity attracts to you what you want. And if you're not clear about stuff, you're just gonna get a bunch of random stuff coming into your life. Life is a boomerang, okay? I'll come back to this. So if you want wealthier clients, the assumption, now the one thing that clarifies you is are you looking for people who can afford your program or are you simply looking for wealthy people? Because they don't need to be the same thing. We're not, it's, we're not inexpensive to work with, but most of our clients are not wealthy, like top 1% of people. The difference is that they see the value in working with us because we can help them create the results that they want. So there's a very big difference. And I want you to understand this. You don't need to work 
with the Warren Buffetts and the Jeff Bezos. You just have to be very clear about your value proposition and show people you have enough value relative to the price you're charging. If people tell you working with you is too expensive, it's not that they're not wealthy. It's that you're not doing a good enough job showing them that their situation is terrible and they need a better outcome. And then you can provide that for them. So that's a separate conversation. But let's just say you want to attract people who have more disposable income, which is totally fine. So we have to understand where do they shop? What brands are they uh, affiliated with? Um, do they shop at this store? Do they wear this type of clothing? Do they uh, take these kind of vacations? Do they travel economy? Do they travel first class? Do they travel private? Do they drive a certain type of car? Do they take their kids to a certain type of school? You need to understand this stuff, okay? But here's the fun thing about this is that you can make all of this up. So let's say you've worked with, I don't know, a dozen clients and none of them really fit the bill. Don't look back to those clients. Create the client you want to attract. Make him up. Make her up. I promise you she's out there. He's out there. Now, it helps if you've already worked with this person. That's awesome because you have a very quick, easy reference. But if you haven't, then there's no rule that says you can't make it up because you are literally saying from this point forward, I'm writing a new chapter and I want to attract these type of, this, this person, not these types of people, this person. I want to attract Janine who drives a white Range Rover. She's blonde. She goes to yoga three times. I don't know why I keep coming up with this, this example. Whatever, okay? Get specific. Because if you are not clear, then you will settle for anything. And if you're not clear, you're going to attract to you anything else. Because it's very much like in the world of health, if you're a generalist, you will attract everything. But we know that specialists make more than generalists do, right? Brain surgeon makes a lot more money than a general practitioner. And a brain surgeon is very clear on the type of problem that they solve, right? So think about that. The more specific you are, the more clear you are, the easier it's going to be to bring that exact person into your business. Now, this is going to sound a little bit woo-woo. I don't, like, I understand this. Listen, I'm a very, very data-driven person, but I'm also a very spiritually inclined individual. And what I've recognized is energy is everything. Energy is everything. And that's why I say like, you can have all the tactical stuff in the world, but nothing, none of that stuff is gonna matter unless you don't have your energy figured out. So being clear on what you want is very important. That's the first step. Second step, this is an internal process, okay? So this has nothing to do with like going out there. This is all internal stuff I'm, I'm giving you here. Because your life, your business is a reflection of you. And it's that simple. That's why business growth, as I talk about in our core tenants, business growth comes after personal growth. You have to grow personally before your business grows. So second piece here, the second thing you need to do to attract wealthy clients is you need to raise your prices. That sounds kind of, well, yeah, that would make sense. So do you think wealthy people want to stay at Motel 6? No, <laughs> they're staying at the Four Seasons. Four Seasons is 750 bucks a night. Motel 6 is $69 a night. Which one do you want to be? So I had a client this morning actually on a call. They were asking, for those clients who can't afford my coaching, my services, should I offer a lower-priced DIY program or even a, a lower-priced coaching program? And I said, well, it depends. If you want to complicate your business and you're okay working with people who can't afford you, then go for it. It's going to be a fucking nightmare. I apologize the the, the swear bomb, the swear bomb, the F bomb. I get passionate about this type of stuff. It, listen, like when you raise your prices, not everyone's going to be able to work with you, but it doesn't matter if you charge $100 or $100 million. There will always be people who say it's too expensive. I can't afford it. And there will always be people who say, yeah, where do I sign? Always. doesn't matter what the price point is. The most important thing with respect to pricing is your conviction and belief around your pricing. So if you are charging $2,000 and you think that's expensive, guess what's gonna happen? That's the, that's the one thing that's gonna come right back at you every single time you speak with a client or a prospect. I don't know if I can afford it, it's too expensive, and that's fundamentally because the objection you have in your mind is what shows up in your life. So until you come to terms of $2,000 being the cheapest thing that you're ever gonna invest in to work with you, that's always gonna be an issue. So the number one thing you can do around pricing is you raise your pricing to match your conviction. So if your conviction is not $2,000, you can't charge $2,000.
start at a thousand, start at 1500, whatever it is. You're can, because you can have like, selling is half technique, half conviction. I mean, you could be mediocre on the technique side, right? Knowing what to say, how to say it. But if you have like conviction and belief, think about all the major religions in the world. Billions of people are religious following something that has never been proven. Think about that. Think about that, okay? We have all been told, or we've all been bought in, for those who are religious, have bought a belief system that was sold to them by their parents, by you know the leaders of, of various churches or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But just understand that they, they have sold themselves, they have sold them on an intangible based on massive conviction. This is the way it is. This is what you need to believe. This is why. All right. See the power there? This is all cults reformed, right? I mean, it's not a great example, but people gravitate to those who have conviction and passion and belief. No one wants to follow someone. No one wants to be led by a leader who has no belief in what they're doing. So if your pricing is whatever it is, you have to work internally to get to the point where you, number one, value yourself enough to charge more. Because if you want wealthy clients, wealthy people are not going to spend, <laughs> they're not looking for the cheapest price. You know, whatever. Some of them might be like coupon clippers, but for the most part, I think they understand they're searching for the best value, not the cheapest price. And if you were the cheapest price, you're going to have to compromise on value because you can't deliver the best possible service at the cheapest price. It's impossible. So it's the decision you have to make. What type of business do I want to run? Do I want to run a Walmart type of business where tiny prices, massive volume, or do I want to run a Four Seasons type of business? And guess what? You know, maybe that's not the best comparison. Let's say Motel 6 versus Four Seasons. Do I want to charge $69 a night or $750 a night? Both offer rooms with beds that you can sleep in, shelter in a hotel. Same outcome, sleep in a room, wake up the next morning, do what you got to do. But fundamentally, certain people would never, ever, ever step foot in a Motel 6. And if your business is positioned as Motel 6, you will repel perhaps the very clients you want to attract because they would never want to be associated with that type of business, okay? So raising your prices, number one, I talk about this in many other places, it's beneficial for you, it's beneficial for your business, your bottom line, blah, blah, blah. But it's actually beneficial for your client. They show up more committed, they pay attention, all that kind of stuff. It's also more reassuring. It's more reassuring. And there's a lot of studies on wine, wine, right? People think that more expensive wine tastes better, which is not necessarily true, but perception is reality. So if people perceive you to be better because you're higher priced, you're more likely to attract better clients, the people who are willing to spend the money because they want to be associated with premium. There's always going to be a percent of the market who's like, I want the best. I don't want the second best. I want the best. Whatever, like, whatever that is, I just want that one because I associate myself as being the best and I want to be associated with the best. If you want those type of clients, you need to provide the best. You need to position yourself as the best. Your pricing needs to reflect that. So that's the second piece. Third piece is the next, next extension from this is, okay, here's who I want to bring into my business. Here's what my pricing looks like. Now, here's the most important question of all. Who do you have to become in order for you to attract that type of clients? Not what do you have to do, none of that stuff. It's who do you have to become, okay? Be, do, have. You wanna have clients that are a specific type of client? You can't just focus on the doing because you forget the first step, which is the being. So who do you have to become? What are the beliefs you need to build? What are the habits you need to build? What are the habits you need to break? What are the beliefs you need to break? What are the skills you need to, ve to develop? What are the character traits you need to develop? You know, some people might say like, how do you dress? Like personally for me, again, this may, or, I mean, I, well, I know this probably isn't the right thing to do. I, I, I mean, I wear t-shirts and I wear hoodies and that's probably not the best visual to attract quote unquote wealthier clients, 
but I also don't care because I know I'm amazing at what I do. And, you know, I'll let the results speak for themselves. I don't need to dress to kind of pretend. However, first impressions do matter. So if you feel like you want to dress up to feel that part, then great, right? You can certainly do that. But it's not about the dressing. It's about what's underneath the clothing that matters most. The reason I wear t-shirts and shorts all the time is because I don't I have nothing to prove. Hopefully, my knowledge and my expertise comes through. So it's not looking at the facade. It's looking and listening and paying attention to what's coming out of my mouth. And the reason I can share this with you is because I've been at this game for a very long time. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've had a tremendous amount of winning, success, impact, all that good stuff, okay? I don't need to fake it until I make it. I've kind of made it, but there is no made it. It's, it's never ending, right? It's, it's a continual growth journey. But I've constantly had to level up. I've continually had to level myself up to just kind of continue to expand. When I started Healthpreneur in 2015, um, I was transitioning from my, my initial health business and I had a, I had a one year period of imposter syndrome where I thought, oh my God, like I've been this health guy for close to 20 years. I lost my hair when I was 17. That's what got me into health, uh, to an autoimmune condition. And for the 20 years, I mean, I associated myself, I saw my, my self identity was like this health fitness guy, ex pro soccer player, et cetera. And when a lot of people started asking for business advice, cause they had seen what I'd done in my business. I was like, man, there's an opportunity here. But when I started the company, Healthpreneur, it was a really interesting year because I didn't really fit into the shoes mentally. I was like, man, like, what are people going to think of me if, you know, I have this YouTube channel with 300,000 subscribers talking about apple cider vinegar and weight loss. And now I'm helping people build their business and with their marketing and stuff like that. Man, what are they going to think of me? And it took me a while to get through that. Like, to be honest with you, it was a good, about a year. And then like I came to terms, I had to grow. I had to grow into this role. I had to grow into the person I'm capable of becoming. And I'm nowhere even close to that. Like if this is my lifespan, like in terms of like what I'm able to become, I'm like, I'm like 10% of the way there. And my goal in life is to get closer to hundred percent of my full, like my true potential. And I hope the same for you. So one of the things that I, I, I realized early on, when I said early on, I mean like a number of years ago, is when I started to really step into my worth, um, one of the things that I noticed, and I'm gonna give you an exercise to do right here, and maybe you can just think about this, is if you've ever sat in first class on an airplane, or if you've ever rented or driven a very expensive car, or if you've ever been to a very expensive restaurant or stayed in a very fancy hotel, I want you to think if you've had those moments, at least one of them. And if you haven't, just stick with me for a second. But if you have, I want you to think about how you felt in that moment. Because here's the secret is I remember one of my first experiences flying first class. I was on an Air Canada flight from Toronto to Chicago. I was sitting in the back of the plane and lo and behold, the flight attendant came up and said, hey, for weight and balance issues, we have to move a couple of people around. Would you like to move up to first class? I was like, uh, yeah, thank you, let's do this. And that was the beginning of the end because as soon as that happened, I could never go back. But here's the thing is when I went up to first class, I felt out of place. I didn't feel like I deserved to be there. And that's the feeling I want you to notice because if you don't feel like you belong there or you're good enough to sit at a fancy restaurant or whatever, that is something you have to work through because that's going to block wealth from coming into your life. And initially I started to play the game. I'm like, oh, I'm going on a trip. I'm going in business for first class. I got to dress up and look all cool. And I did that for a few years because I thought I needed to play that part to fit in. And now I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I go on the plane with like my, my jeans and a t-shirt. I bring my kids with me. People are like, well, what the hell's going on here? That, that's because I feel 1000% confident in my skin. I don't need to pretend to be someone I'm not. And I, I share this exercise with you to finish off here to think of if you have put yourself in those situations and if you haven't, here's the gift I wanna give you is once a month, 
uh, and maybe I'll do a different video on this, is have a play account. Have a set, a, you know, a percentage of your money that you make, you know, 5%, whatever it is. Put it aside and blow it every month. It's one of the best things I ever did in my life. When I was living in a third floor apartment with my wife, we were making like no money. Uh, we saved up, we had like our play account. And one of our first kind of fancy restaurants was this restaurant called Crush Wine Bar in Toronto. And I remember we took uh, the label off the wine bottle. We had a bit of a photo album where we kept these memories. And I remember going to that restaurant. It was like a $200 dinner. And at the time it was like, we saved up all this money. We're just gonna like blow it and go all out. And I felt like a boss, right? It was so good. And it, was, it wasn't about like, how am I gonna pay for this? Cause I already had the money set aside and just let it go. And it was amazing because it allowed me to feel wealthy, at least in that moment. And I continue to recreate those experiences over time. And I think it's one of the, the, the most incredible gifts you can give yourself. If you love cars like I do, like I love fast cars. I drive a McLaren, it's, it's a friggin' joy. The reason I have the car is because a number of years ago, I paid for one day to drive supercars with a buddy of mine. And that experience put me into that environment where I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna own this car. And so sometimes you have to get into that experience to fully internalize that you want it, that what it feels like, that you can have it. And then it sets like wheels in motion for you to bring that stuff into your life. And it's, it's really amazing. So anyways, um, if you've enjoyed this video, again, we've been talking about how to attract wealthier clients into your business. Just a quick recap is number one is you have to identify, clarify who this perfect client is. Very, very detailed. Number two is raise your prices. And number three is really looking at internally and asking yourself, who do I have to become to start attracting this type of person? At the beginning, I mentioned life is a boomerang. What I mean by that is you attract who you are. Okay, you attract who you are. And the nice thing about business is that you're gonna grow. And as you're growing in business, you're gonna start to attract better and better clients over time. So hopefully this video has found you well. If it has, I've got lots of other amazing videos to help you get more clients and grow your coaching business. If you're in the health space specifically, uh, there's a couple links below this video in the description. Watch the next video in the series. I think you'll really enjoy it. And um, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Healthpreneur channel. Lots of amazing stuff to help you grow an amazing health business. And if you're not a health expert, lots of great stuff to help you take your mindset and your business to the next level. So. That's all for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uriel came here, signing off.